Look over there, it's Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> You may see that we're doing a thing here. Just, just you know, you're a part of it. It's, it's, it's a beat. I can make a beat. <laughs> and I'm just going to like reach to my lovely little assistant here. Who's going to end? Uh, thank you. Don't look at it. Just shy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> something's happening, but it isn't exactly clear. But, uh, my name is John Kirk. I write for Star Wars Insider and uh, popmythology.com, Trek Corp. Yes, I'm going to mention the other distinguished competition. Last name of Kirk. I'm sorry, what can I do? And I definitely <laughs> am very excited. I've never shared the stage with a robot before. This. This is big for me. My life is not, you know, very exciting, you know. But this is cool. But I think I can just top that just a bit because we've got the guy right over here who operates this creature. Ladies and gentlemen, Toronto Comic Con, big hand. Welcome, please, Brian Herring to the stage. And thank you, Five Over First. Hello. Well, that was subtle, wasn't it? No, just a little bit. I, I do subtle very well. <laughs> oh, what shall we talk about? I was thinking about this thing called Star Wars. You might have heard of it. Oh, what then? Yeah, all right, well, let's go for it. Uh, okay, so I know that you were a fan from the very beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how does, how does that work, transitioning from fan to fandom maker? Did you like that? That was alliteration. That's very good, that's very good. Can I first of all say how lovely it is to see everybody, because no one's been out for about two years, and it's just really great to see you all. Yeah, I think we've done some most of your favorites. Thank you for coming out. And, you know, it's everyone's had a rough couple of, couple of years, I'm really glad everyone's back on the comp circuit. Are you having a good time? Yeah. That's all we um, I was that kid in 77. I had drapes and the slippers and the toys and all the stuff. I saw the film when it first came out and it blew me away. Um, in fact, I had a report card go home when I was about 10 that said that Brian's obsession with Star Wars will lead him nowhere and he should concentrate on his academic studies. <laughs> now that is good, solid advice, kids. <laughs> but every now and then you never quite know what little hand life is going to deal you. Um, I, I, know. <laughs> I did. I, did um, I was always a Star Wars fan. Right. Um, but I had gone into shows uh, from when I was about 18. Yeah. So I had worked on films and television and uh, worked in theatre and done various other bits and pieces. So it, it wasn't that much of a leap to, do, to get a job on a film. Right. But to get that job on that film. Was just the sort of the process. I was hired as the. Um, I, I'll, go, I'll go jump back a little bit. I, I, I started my career as a puppeteer in 1992 <coughs> on, excuse me, on a TV show called Spitting Image, which was a political satire show. We're Canadian, um, we love it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, so I, 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 I actually lied at an audition. I met a guy and he said, I'll be doing these, these workshops. Um, and I went along and I'll come sort of a bit short. Uh, live at the audition and was taken on as a trainee on, on this thing called subsequently a Santage inside the suit. So then they would be rocking it around and turning the head. And you would take that physical performance and if you put happy noises on it, you've got a happy droid. But if you take those happy noises off and replace them with angry noises, you've got exactly the same physical performance, but now you've got an angry droid on your head and you've changed nothing with the physicality. So what we've got for BBA, <coughs> excuse me, I've been talking for two days straight. Um, <laughs> bottle of water right there. Oh, it. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it's just going to be hard to reach. <laughs> <laughs> so with BBA, because he can move his head, if you want to make him look sad, you just push the head forward very, very slowly. If you want to make him look startled, you pull it back. If you want to make him look like he's thinking, you just tip it to the side. <laughs> you know, and it's all the sort of 
the sorts of things that we don't think about. And what we have to do, and we, we, Dave and I got two weeks in a sound stage with all the toys, and they said, right, go find it. You've got to you know, find his personality now. And we read away, we read the script. And oh, what year was that? That was 2013. So it was a 43-year-old man to be handed episode seven. Well, go away and read that. I'll leave your phone there, by the way. <laughs> and that guy is going to sit in the corner while you read it and watch you do it. So, it was, so you handed your phone in, they gave you these two, they gave you these two big black leather bound books with red pages. And why have these scripts got red pages? Anyone? You can't photocopy them. Because you can't photocopy them. That's it. So we're sitting in it, you know, Dave and I sit there, and Dave and I are roughly the same age, both massive Star Wars fans. We opened up on our first page, Star Wars Episode 7, written by J.J. Abrams, Michael Arm, <laughs> and, and, uh, and, 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 and Lawrence Kasdan. Yeah, I just got goosebumps. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> right, okay, that's good. <laughs> a long time ago in the galaxy far <laughs> I know this! <laughs> oh, I've seen this one! Um, and then we just started reading this new adventure just played out in front of us. And it was that point that we suddenly realised that this thing wasn't just in this film a little bit. It was like, oh, this is in this movie. Oh, everyone's going to see this. We've really gone screw this up. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we, so we, so we read away, we read the script, and we, you know, we were allowed to take notes. So it's like, well, okay, we need to, we, we know it needs to do that. So we've got to go away and work on that. It's going to be sad. It's going to be this and this, and this. So we just went away for two weeks and worked out. How do you make it look sad? How do you make it look happy? Does it go downstairs? And we discovered that it doesn't go downstairs. <laughs> because he's too deep for a normal step. So we uh, discovered this and uh, we went on and started filming. I'll jump forward a little bit. We got to the set of Maz's Castle where the lightsaber calls to Ray. And we did the set recce, which is something a couple of days before you shoot on a set, you go and you sort of walk through it with the director and a few of the other people. They'll the lay them as you go. And um, I said to the second assistant, I said, we're not going to do those stairs, right? And he went, no, 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 I said, you're not going to do the stairs. Two days later, he comes up to me and says, oh, yeah, Joe, you just want you to come down the, bar, the, like, the last couple of steps? I'm like, you said! <laughs> <laughs> and we were quite lucky in the fact it was a spiral staircase so that the, the, the steps of the outside were quite deep. And we had to make up a way that BB-8 went downstairs really quickly. And I decided that he was kind of like a toddler who bum shuffles down. You know when kids come down their backs like that? So if you watch him come down those stairs, what he does is he checks the step really quick and then he pulls his head back and he bumps himself down because he doesn't like it. He doesn't like stairs. Why would you? He's round. <laughs> so, he, so he does that. He does that on every step. So we started. We were supposed to do two or three steps, and then Jay was like, "Just, just take it up a little more, bit more, bit more." Now, can you go, go to the top, it's like a twenty-two staircase? <laughs> and he weighs around, I don't know, twenty-five pounds, which isn't a great deal. That's going to be until you're fun. holding that up and you're wearing a green nylon onesie in lights, and you've done, you've done it ten, fifteen times. <laughs> So that, when you see BB-8 coming down the stairs behind Ray, that is all a practical shot, and all they've done is digitally remove me from behind it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, so we went, so we went the script. Sorry. <laughs> and so we went away, we found, uh, and we just found out what he looked good doing, what he didn't look good doing. Um, and, and I shot a camera test for it quite early on, where we just, and, it, and you can see this on the Force Awakens documentary. I'm walking along with my hands in my pockets, because they were doing a camera test, because you have to work out how wide you're going to go if you want to have a shot with something as small as BB-8 standing next to something like Chewbacca. You could just, that's got to be like a massive lens on that. So we were just, they were just trying out lens sizes and things like that. And I looked down at it and I thought, well, it's about the size of a dog. And then as soon as I did that, I'm like, okay, I think he's, he's Poe Dameron's dog. Because Poe Dameron says to his dog, run away. Here's the thing, get lost. You know, go escape from here. Then Ray finds a stray dog, and she frees a stray dog, and the stray dog follows her home, yeah. and she takes that dog back to his own, to, to, to his owner. Mm. <laughs> and the dog in analogy just stayed with me all the way through. I just think he's kind of like a really tenacious Yorkshire Terrier. <laughs> <laughs> 